Now, Washington Mornings on the Mall. At AM 630. Good morning, everybody. 607 on WMAO, where Washington comes to talk. Brian Wilson, Larry O'Connor. Coming up at 737, KT McFarland. Well, a good day to have her, because the Secretary of State's going to testify today with regard to Benghazi up on Capitol Hill. Also, Senator Mike Lee. We're going to talk about a whole host of things, including Benghazi. Uh, but uh, right now, uh, it's time to talk about... Minimum wage. Yes, small business owners, listen up. Right now, the minimum wage in the state of Maryland is $7.25. But if a new law is passed, as it is being proposed by Senator, uh, State Senator Rob Garagiola from Montgomery County. Shocking that he's from Montgomery County. He would be doing this. Uh, and Delegate Aisha Braveboy from Prince George's uh, over in the uh, the House side. Uh, that minimum wage would not <laughs> increase a dollar, not two dollars. Folks, it would go up two dollars and seventy five cents all the way up to a whopping ten dollars an hour. That would be the minimum wage. Ten dollars an hour. Uh, how about that, small business owners? Joining us now is a uh, University of Maryland economist and a frequent guest here on Mornings on the Mall, Peter Marisi. Good morning. Professor Marisi, how are you? Talk to me about the economic impact of raising the minimum wage to $10. I mean, why don't you care about the people who are uh, trying to get by on minimum wage? I mean, clearly nobody can survive on seven twenty-five an hour. Well, I certainly care about people that have to survive on seven twenty-five an hour. I'm not an inhuman person. However, if you raise the minimum wage, to, we're going to have a minimum wage. I mean, economists don't like minimum wages as a general principle because it's, it's price-fixing or price-regulating. But whatever you set it at, if it's above what the market would determine otherwise, you're going to have unemployment. And at about $10, you're going to have a lot of teen unemployment in the summertime, for example. It's also going to raise the price of things like fast food, which uses a lot of minimum wage uh, workers, or people just above it. You know, if somebody's making $8 an hour and the minimum wage is bumped to 10 they'll probably get a little bump up to 10 you know, 50 or something. So it's going to create some unemployment. Uh, if we just start with the proposition that there's going to be a minimum wage, the question is how much do you raise it? Going all the way to ten in two years is a bit of is a bit of a jump. Why? Well, it's it's think about it in percentage terms. I mean, that'll have a very heavy impact on businesses. Uh, one of the things they want to do is they want to index it to inflation. Uh, that sounds reasonable because you know you say, well, we always have this crisis that we we haven't touched it since 2005. So whatever we do, then it seems like a lot when it's when it, when it's not. Uh, but the thing is, in times of recession, automatic increases can 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 increase unemployment even more. You know what? I, I, you're going to be surprised at my take on this because normally I'm I'm always on the side of business. But a minimum wage of ten dollars an hour means that in an, on an annual basis, if you work a forty hour week for fifty two weeks, you're going to walk away with twenty thousand eight hundred dollars a year. That's right. And you know what? I think that if you give 40 hours of your hard work and labor to somebody honestly, $20,000 seems like a pretty small amount to get back in return for it. Oh, I, I agree with you there. Uh, now, one of the things to remember is, is that most people don't work 40 hours a week. When was the last time you only worked 40 hours? Hey, hey, hey. Wait a minute. Well, and also, Professor Marisi, aren't most people who are on minimum wage part-timers or seasonal employees? Well, they are, but they do need the money. And they are marrying that money with other resources. And, and, and there is a point at which you have to say, suppose you just assume people work 60 hours a week, which is more reasonable in this economy. Yeah. I mean, I certainly work 60 hours a week. The only people that don't work, you know, government employees, and even a lot of them work more than you think. Your occasional radio host. It, well, yes, occasional radio host like myself. <laughs> uh, but even $30,000 a year is very tough to make it. If you sit down with a pad and pencil and say, suppose you have two wage earners in the family, one working 60 hours, the other working 40 because there's other family responsibilities, you get up to 100 hours, and you say, all right, two people going to work in separate locations, living on $50,000 a year, have to have transportation. Right. And uh, uh, child care in many cases, some child care and so forth. It really becomes extraordinarily difficult. Uh, one of the things I do like about raising the minimum wage, and boy, this could bring in calls from the left, is it m- makes it much tougher to hire illegal immigrants. Uh, oh, explain that. Well, because uh, you know they're willing to come in and work very cheaply because conditions where they live lived before are very bad, and they'll double up in apartments and triple up and so forth. Uh, it's pretty tough to pay people less than minimum wage and not be revealed. I mean, it's pretty illegal. Yeah. And so if you raise the minimum wage, 
it's sort of a, you know it, it sort of makes it difficult to exploit those people, which I, I kind of like. I mean, I don't really like uh, ex- exploiting those kinds of people. But you know, there's a lot of places where in the economy where it's very difficult to enforce this. Like the people that you see not working for Merry Maids, which is incorporated and in, 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 in all that, but right. there's a lot of shadow uh, cleaning services. Right, sure. Yeah, cash under the table kind of places. Cruises. Well, not even under the table. Just, just, just <laughs> they, they pay their taxes and so forth. But they pay them for 40 hours, and they give them a route to do. They do six houses today, and it really takes 11 hours to do, not eight. Oh, I see. You know, there's an awful lot of that. I got fired from a job as a kid because I didn't want to be exploited that way. The guy was making me work, you know, more than the sh- he was paying me. But, right? but, 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 and I said, I'm not going to do this. And the guy says, get the hell out of here. <laughs> and I, w- I was being paid, you know, very close to the minimum. Even then you were a rebel, weren't you? <laughs> what? Even then you were a rebel, weren't you? Well, I just said that, you know, I mean, this isn't very much money, and, and you want me to stay here late and clean up this place, and you don't want me to pay you. And you know, it was hard It was hard work, too. It wasn't, you know, as often as the case with minimum jobs. Our guest is a rebel economist, Peter Marisi, from the University of Maryland. He's wearing leather right now, just in case you're wondering, because uh, that's what kind of rebel he is. Uh, what about the economic impact here on employment, though? Aren't there a lot of small business owners who do have part-time or seasonal employees who are making seven and a quarter an hour, and they're barely making it. Now, if they have to pay them another, uh, you know, three dollars an hour, aren't they going to have to start laying people off? There will be fewer people employed. It will not be as draconian and dramatic as many small businesses tell you, because if you have, if you have a hardware store and you have to pay ten dollars an hour, and Lowe's doesn't, you got a problem. But remember, everybody's bottom of wage is going to go up. So the price of buying, a, uh, you know, two screws and a bolt at a hardware store is going to go from twenty-seven cents to twenty-eight. Cents. So this is really a tax on the American consumer, the Maryland consumer, to pay for these. Uh, uh, this is a well, way for the government to get the it, people to pay for uh, higher salaries. Uh, you're getting close. What it really is is income redistribution. Yeah. In the net, well, uh, it's income redistribution, but also it lays a very heavy burden on those few people, and there are some. It's not a lot. But those few people who will be unemployed because of this, they will have no job Good. at all. What, quick question, a uh, political question on this, uh, Professor Marisi. I always see, you know, you see these protesters screaming at these events at the Capitol, raise the wage, raise the wage, and they're all wearing SEIU shirts. They're all union members. They're not making minimum wage. Why are unions so in favor of raising the minimum wage when they're already getting a negotiated salary? Well, I, I frankly think that the union movement has been captured by left-wing radicals. When you talk to these people, uh, and I have, you know, I've had dinner with the president, the U.S. president of the AFL-CIO and his, and his lieutenants. I mean, they are hard-left ideologues, and they, they just don't like business. So it has nothing to do with the membership. They just want to stick it to business. Uh, you got it. All right. <laughs> Professor Peter that, that's Marisi. That's pretty good summary. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Well, just bottom line it there. That's what we do here. All right. Uh, that very thoughtful uh, uh, conversation about the yeah. uh, impending I don't know where I'm at on this. I want to think about it some more. Yeah. Thank, All right. Thanks, thank, Dr. Marisi. Thank you.